Here we're gonna look at one of the big questions in set theory, and that is, is there a set containing all sets? And in order to do that, we need to look at one of the axioms that builds set theory, and we'll also work through a very famous paradox, which comes from a loosening of that axiom. Okay, so which axiom are we going to work with here? It's the so-called axiom of separation. And so that says that if you have a set, so let's suppose that S is a set and P is a definite condition, then the following collection is also a set. So this is all X in S where X satisfy that definite condition. So why is this called the axiom of separation? Well, you can think of it like this. We're starting with a set and we're separating off the elements from that set that satisfy whatever condition we're working on. Okay, so I've built up some examples just to get an idea for how this goes. So our first example starts with x, which are natural numbers. So that would be our set in this case, the natural numbers. And then our condition is 2 divides x. In other words, x is a multiple of 2. So that clearly builds a set. Well, it builds a set by the axiom of separation, but we can also see what set it is. It's the set of all even natural numbers. So we have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, so on and so forth. So it is an infinite set, but that's most definitely a set. So for our next example, let's take all x in R3. Maybe I'll put an arrow over it to make sure we know that this is like a vector. Satisfying the condition that the size of x is equal to 1. Okay, well, what set is that? Well, that's just going to be the sphere, the 2 sphere. So notice I've got a sphere here, radius 1 centered at the origin. So those will be all of the points in R3 that satisfy this condition. Then for my next example, let's take all points x, y in R2, and they satisfy the following binary condition. So x must be a natural number, and then y must be bigger than or equal to x. So that means the only possible values for x are 1, 2, 3, 4, so on and so forth. And then y has to be bigger than whatever that natural number is. Okay, so that's going to give us this string of vertical lines. So notice if x equals 1, y is allowed to be anything bigger than or equal to 1. So that'll give us this line segment or this ray going upwards. If x is equal to 2, y is bigger than or equal to 2, we have that ray going upwards, and then so on and so forth. So this is like an upside down staircase or something. Now that we have a good idea for how the axiom of separation works, let's see if we can generalize this axiom just a little bit and see if we also get a reasonable result. So our slight generalization to the axiom of separation, which was something reasonable to assume was true, is something called the general comprehension principle. So let's see what that says and how it differs from the axiom of separation. And I just wanna point out that the axiom of separation, while it is not provable, it is taken to be true. So it's not provable to be false either. It's just something which we have decided is a reasonable rule to build set theory upon. Okay, so the general comprehen comprehension principle. It says for each definite condition P, there is a set built as follows. So we'll call that set A, and it will be given by all X such that P of X. So I want to note here that the big difference between this and the separation axiom or the axiom of separation is we do not require the building blocks to start in a set. So notice these X are not assumed to come from any set. Okay, well that's a little bit hard to wrap our heads around because a priori, we kind of think about everything as coming from a set. But as we'll see, not every collection of objects forms a set, and our path to see that starts with something called Russell's paradox. And that says the general comprehension principle is not valid. So in other words, if we remove this requirement that X starts out coming from some sort of larger set, then this is not something that is reasonable to assume. 
So how will we prove this fact that this is not valid? Well, we'll do it by finding something that looks like a counterexample. So in other words, we're going to have to find a definite condition where things go awry when we try to describe this set. Okay, so let's define our definite condition as follows. So let's say P of X is equal to the following condition. X is a set and we have X is not an element of itself. So let's notice that most sets satisfy this rule. The set of natural numbers most definitely satisfies this rule because the set of natural numbers contains natural numbers. It doesn't contain itself. The set of real numbers, the set of continuous functions, the set of all varieties of apples, these are all things that are sets and they do not contain themselves. So this seems like a reasonable definite condition. So now let's suppose that the general comprehension principle is true and consider the set formed out of this definite condition. So let's maybe write it like this. We'll consider R, which is equal to X such that P of X. So in other words, this is the set of all sets X such that X is not an element from X. And now we want to work towards a contradiction of this thing existing in the first place. So maybe the most obvious question to ask is, is R an element of R? And so let's ask that question by working through the two possible cases. And the two possible cases are, yes, it is an element of itself, or no, it is not an element of itself. So let's do this first case. Let's suppose that R is an element from R. Okay, but let's look at the entry fee into being inside of R. The entry fee is that you are not an element of your set. So that implies that R is not an element from R. Okay, so that means this first case must not be true. So let's move on to the second case where we suppose that R is not an element from R. But that's exactly the entry fee into being in R. So that implies that R is in R. Okay, that means the second case can't be true. And maybe more specifically, what that tells us is that the condition for R being an element from R is equivalent to the condition for R not being an element from R. But this is clearly impossible, so we have reached a contradiction. And I guess, what did we contradict? Well, we contradicted the validity of the general comprehension principle because we started out assuming at the beginning that the general comprehension principle was valid and we constructed this crazy set out of its validity. Okay, so that finishes this proof. And now let's see how we can use this proof to show that there is in fact no set of all sets. So far, we've looked at the axiom of separation and its slight generalization, which was called the general comprehension principle, which turned out to be not a valid principle. Now we're going to use these ideas to prove the following corollary to Russell's paradox, and that is there is no set containing all sets. And we're going to do this with just a classic proof by contradiction. So let's, by way of contradiction, suppose that we do have a set of all sets. So that set would be described as follows. V equals X such that X is a set. This would be the set of all sets. But now let's notice by the axiom of separation, we know that R which equals X in V such that X is not an element from X is a set. But this thing R is exactly what we showed is not a set by Russell's paradox. So let's just reiterate that, not a set by Russell's paradox. So we've hit a problem. So if we have a set of all sets, then this thing R is a set, but then by Russell's paradox, this thing is not a set. So like I said, we just reached a contradiction. 
So what must we have contradicted? Well, we contradicted the existence of this set of all sets. So if the assumption of the existence of a set containing all sets leads to a contradiction, then there in fact must be no set containing all sets. And that's a good place to stop.